Probably the biggest compliment a reviewer can make to the reviewed item is when the review is over and it's time to decide what to do with the reviewed item. Because you have a few options. You can sell it, you can give it away, or you can keep using this thing as your everyday item. And I'm happy, I'm kind of happy to announce to you that the thing we will be reviewing today, the Diaton F4 long range, long range, small and light quadcopter I got from the XTEC Sinta. Um, yes, goes into the latest category because it might not be perfect, it might have one or two problems um, connected with it, but in the end, I love the thing, and this thing will be my first. Actually, probably the first 4-inch quadcopter that I actually like to fly. Quite frankly, I was never the biggest fan of the quadcopters that uses the propeller smaller than 5 inches. Because I tried at least a few over the years and every time there was something, well, let's say sub optimal. Still, the 5 incher was better, smoother, more stable and with 3 inches, 2 inches and 4 inches there was something that was not really appealing to me. Yeah, they are smaller, they are lighter, but it was never really worth the effort of migrating for 5 or 7 inches to the smaller ones. And when in the year 2020 this new class of the small, tiny, almost 250 grams long range, okay, long range quadcopters appeared, I was like, meh. I was not really like very interested into diving into this topic. However, when I got the offer from the XTEC Sinte, which by the way is a sponsor of this review in a way that they sent me this stuff, and I'm just quite honestly telling you that the situation. Okay, Pavel, please pick something. I goes, okay, maybe I will go with this go with this thing, even if I will not like it at the end, I will be able to sell it and buy me something better or just spend this money on drugs and alcohol. No, I doubt I would be able to buy any drugs for it. And that was the reality. And the reality looked like that until I actually started to use this thing. And after flying with at least few lipos, I decided, yeah, there is really in this in this class of sub 5 inch long rangers. They are fun, they are cool. And uh, the Aton Roma F4 long range, which looks like a copy of the Flyway Explorer, but it's not really a direct copy of the class, has something in it. From the beginning, it's not perfect, it has one super irritating feature, but once you get this thing solved, it's just like that. So, let me change the camera angle and let's see how the Diaton Roma F4 long range is built internally. This is the Diaton Roma F4 long range. Bear in mind, this is the analog version, not the digital, because they are selling this thing also with the Cadix Vista here in the back and the Nebula Micro or Nano, I think, in the front. But bear in mind, if you really would like to, you will also fit the full-size DJI uh, camera for the uh, for, for the Vista itself. It has the VTX in the back, it has the flight controller and the ESC 4-in-1 in the front, the longer antenna for the VTX, which is kind of important because when you are flying it's a good idea to have the antenna quite far. The place for the GPS, um, bear in mind this is the... The GPS that will not allow you to use INAV with it. If you will have the idea to migrate, for example, to INAV from this thing, because I will be, for example, migrating mine to INAV, you will have a problem because the GPS has no magnetometer and the flight controller, which is Mamba F4 Mini Mark III, does not have the I2C pad. So there is something like a challenge. Still, for the beta flight rescue mode, it's fine. The small 1404, oh, no, okay. 1404 are not that small pro motors for the 4 inch propellers and the, everything is in a configuration on the dead cat, of the dead cat. Even in the set you can get a mount for the GoPro in the front, so it's possible. Uh, however, I'm not really sure that really max makes much sense. However, it's possible. And that's the Roma from the outside. Let's take a look at the insides. 
What's inside? Well, quite a lot of space for such a small frame. Because, yes, the GPS is in the back in the TPU printed enclosure that in theory should work fine in practice yeah it's work fine however there is a problem with that thing there is a separate place for your receiver for example crossfire i'm using the immersion rc ghost on this thing the flight stack with the esc and the flight controller and some extra space in the front in the front for example to install the buzzer in this case this is wi-fi uh, finder mini which almost perfectly fits over here in the front right uh, behind the camera and the camera itself in the analog version it is the Runcam Nano. Runcam Nano i2 I think is yes, definitely this is the Runcam Nano in. and this is all and like I mentioned you can easily swap the analog VTX with the Cadix Vista or just get yourself the digital version with the Cadix Vista itself and then and then when you put all the all the elements we have over there over here and put it on the scale so let me turn on the scale and let's start putting things on including battery strap and including four screws of course because why not the weight is below 150 grams let's say around 145 at the 4S uh, 550 lipo and you are at 220 grams. This thing with its full configuration and the flight time we're gonna discuss in the moment is below 250 and in the upcoming years this is a very important. So now, now let's go to me talking about what I like and what is a problem with the Roma. The first thing I like about Roma is that it flies great out of the box. You install the receiver, you connect your goggles, analog or digital, plug in the battery. By the way, 4S seems like a perfect uh, battery voltage for this kind, uh, this quad in, in particular. And then you go to the flying field and you just start flying. No need to set up everything. No, maybe Okay, maybe flight modes if you really are one of those that like to keep everything on the in exactly the same way on every of your uh, quads. You take off, no need to tune anything, no need to adjust filters, no need to play with the configuration. It comes pre-configured and actually after flying this thing, I never really felt a big need to retune the quad or change something like a behavior. Okay, I enabled the air mode const uh, as a always enabled feature because this is how I fly quads. But besides that, I change absolutely nothing and the beta flight 4.2 point something flashed on this thing handled everything else just wonderfully with the rpm filters enabled by default and everything else set up just like it should be next it's yeah it is a long range because using even this small battery which is 500 oh, 550 milliamp hours 4s in the sub-zero temperatures which probably lowered the flight time considerably i was able to fly with the relatively nice pace for at least five to six minutes and if I would be able to make the GPS work of this reliably, I will also probably be able to measure the distance. So this is another uh, thing. It flies good. It flies long. It Yes, it really can be used as the long range, especially with the DJI uh, HD configuration, which offers a lot of range. And it gives you this nice freedom. You do not have to carry this big quadcopter, find a spot. You just land this put this thing somewhere and just start flying without having to worry about the regulations that apply for the quads above 250 grams however however like i mentioned there is well at least one problem with this particular quad and this is also uh, something that other reviewers were noticing and reporting the gps GPS takes bloody long to get a solid fix and the good weather conditions it's well okay you have to wait at least a few minutes if there are some clouds or anything else is happening in the in the atmosphere you might wait and wait and wait and not get the fix 
What's the reason behind that? In the beginning I thought it's maybe faulty GPS, so I replaced with a different GPS and it never helped. Uh, luckily, it can be solved and can be solved. For example, Gal Kramer has the video that shows you how he fixed the problems on, on his uh, Diaton Roma F4 uh, with the better placement of the wires, because the reason is it's very simple. The GPS antenna is just slightly too close to the VTX and to the antenna for the VTX. Um, I made an experiment. You plug off the VTX and it fixes uh, obtained immediately. You plug the VTX in again, it starts to pollute the air with the radio frequencies that just block the reception of the of the of the GPS signal. People also reported this problem and people solved this problem. So it's, um, let's say, if you know what you expect, you can live with that. If not the problem with the GPS, I would say that it's just perfect. And with this, bear in mind that you might have to do some extra steps to improve the GPS handling. And now, and now the summary, uh, yay or nay? Yay. And uh, in spite, despite, uh, Despite the problems with the GPS, I think it's a really a fun quad to fly. I really liked flying on the, let's say, not that far range because of the weather outside and the fact that you are getting immediately close. Still, it was fun. It was stable out of the box and the motors have enough oomph to even pretend that you can do a freestyle with the sneak. So, fun to fly, small light and just works great. I'm not selling this one. I'm not giving this one. This will be my quadcopter, but I will make improvements to the to the build, uh, like uh, get a better GPS module with the magnetometer and replace the flight controller to be able to use this thing with iNav, because in iNav I'm pretty sure it will just shine in terms of the GPS performance. And uh, if you have an option to get the analog or the digital, I think the digital will be actually slightly more interesting. Of course, you have to have the goggles, but you know how it is. By the way, I will be moving mine also to the digital version because I have one Cadix Vista I'm not sure what I'm going to do about. So it will just land on this thing and will be amazing. Anything else? Um, there will be more materials about the the Roma F4 long range uh, because I will definitely show you when my conversion is over, how this thing is behaving after the conversion, and uh, if I will find a good way to solve the problem with the GPS that I can confirm that it's really working. I'll always will make a separate video that shows you how to do it. But besides that. Fantastic, and I think also it's reasonably priced. So if you are thinking about getting yourself a long ranger and you are ready to improve something about the the GPS, yes, definitely go for it. I think it might be a quite good addition to your regular five inch fleet because sub two fifty and sub two fifty, yeah, it's right now kind of important and it flies great. So. That's uh, all for today. Thank you very much for watching and until the next one. Bye bye.